What was the best part of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2? Was it the story? The animation? The art? That's good. That's damn good. Well, to me, all of these things and a lot more work together to make a great season. But there was one thing that made these things work together as well as they did. And that was the directing, or should I say the director, Shota Goshozono. Shota Goshozono won the best director at the Anime Awards this year, and he absolutely deserved it, as what he did on Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 absolutely blew me away. To explain easily really quickly, the director is the person Person who is in charge of the whole product. He's responsible for the creative decisions and instructs all the workers of what to do. Now, I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to directing and the makings of anime, so a lot of this video is just gonna be me being like, whoa, look at this, this is so cool. Already in the first episode, I was extremely impressed. It starts off with a pretty short sequence where everything is completely gray and desaturated as Ghetto moves through the streets just to illuminate everything in blue. Like, look at the difference the blue light makes here, making what was before a completely gray and lifeless scene into one with really vibrant colors. We then get to the part where Utahime and Meimei go to this house to exercise a curse and the camera work here is just A1. There are so many creative places they put the camera. There's this one shot where the camera moves through the wall and you actually see the insides of it, like all the wires and technology. The two of them quickly get stuck in an infinite loop where no matter how much they walk, they'll just end up in the same space. And they show us this by, well, showing us. The camera is completely static and the two characters walk past it time and time and again. It conveys the loop perfectly. Or this shot here where the camera keeps moving down the hall but just keeps ending up in the same place. This whole sequence is just so fun to watch and super impressive. I didn't even talk about the quick scene before this which showed the family of the people who used to live in this house, making it look like it was recorded on an old handheld camera, even making the art style look like it could have been made in the 90s, further communicating that this happened long ago. All of the parts I've talked about so far takes place in the first 10 minutes of the episode. The first half of the episode contains three different sections which all have a completely different visual style. Isn't that fucking crazy? I could literally pick an episode at random and just praise the visuals endlessly. And changing the art style is something that happens like very frequently. Whether it be the neon cyberpunk style in the Yuji vs Choso fight, the Mechamaru Gurren Lagan reference, the way Nanami was drawn in this episode, the way they draw Fushiguro in episode 41 and how the first half of the episode has the black bars. There's also so many drawings that capture the manga art style spot on. It shows that these people know what they're doing and that they know the source material very well. And all of this just makes it more engaging to watch. It adds variety and also can just help show what type of scene it is we're looking at. Again, I'm not the best at explaining this stuff, but look at the style of these shots of Yuji. They somehow make me understand even better what emotions Yuji is feeling here. I also love how many shots look like they've been done in 3D because they're so well animated. This is so hard to pull off in 2D without it looking like this. What the hell? Oh my god, no way. But it makes it so much more engaging to watch because you're not used to it happening in anime due to how hard and time consuming it is to do. Normally the camera is more static and things will come into frame on their own. All the shots just become more memorable due to how they're done. Like everyone remembers the shot of Gojo and Ghetto just walking. It's just so full of life and passion even in a simple scene like this. Off the top of your head, can you remember any shot from a different show or movie of someone walking normally? Nymph 10 books. Probably not because that's not moments people normally put too much effort into making look good or creative. I'm sure you all remember this transition right here or this shot of Ghetto in the shower or this transition. All of this comes together to just really make a good adaptation. Now when it comes to directing and adaptation, you also need to understand and the story, like really understand it. You need to know what type of facial expression the character is making in the source material and know exactly what feeling they're feeling. Otherwise, you'll end up communicating something different to the audience than what was intended. Now, when it comes to adaptations, I will say that I prefer a one-to-one -one remake. No changes or additions, just do what the original did. Because if you don't, you're basically saying that you can do better than the original, and that's kind of crazy to say. But there were actually a decent amount of changes that were made in this season, changes that I think made the show better. For example, the Nanami beach scene. This is how that part looked like in the manga. 
aka it doesn't exist. But still, I think it makes this whole part and Nanami's character a lot better. It emphasizes how Nanami struggles with choosing between helping others and living for himself. He is doing the right thing to do while simultaneously wishing he was on holiday. It makes us understand him more and makes the lesson behind his character clearer. This is a scene that a director with a surface level understanding of the story wouldn't be able to add. One of my favorite moments from this season is during the Jogo and Sukuna fights when Jogo is spamming fire all over the place and you see the temperature display in the background. As the fire approaches, it quickly rises to 100. Now, we could already figure out that it's pretty hot there, but like, now we really know it's hot. Oh my god! Wow! And that wasn't in the manga at all. This is also an anime exclusive part. It's honestly pretty funny, but isn't this exactly something Mahito would do? That's just how much of a scumbag he is. And you know what's also anime exclusive? Like all of Toto's best moments from the Mahito fight. Remember the beautifully animated sequence where he switches places with the rock that Yuji throws and just turns into a god? Well, here's how that part looked like in the manga. Remember when he has a whole music video in the middle of the episode? That never happens in the manga. And those are both some of my favorite parts of the entire season. Like I said, I usually don't like it when changes are made, but the changes they did this season were really great. So is it fine for changes to be made? Well, I still prefer a one-to-one, -one, but if a change is made that I think is good, I'll be more than fine with it. There are changes made in the season that I didn't like. For example, I didn't like how much longer they made the Maharaga fight. Maharaga isn't much of a character, so seeing the two of them go at it for as long as they do isn't really that interesting. It's obviously incredible to look at because the animation is some of the best best I've ever seen. But I would have much preferred it if it was as short as it was in the manga. The point of that scene and the moment is to destroy the city and showcase Sukuna's strength. Things that were already accomplished in the episode before, during the Jogo fight. But again, the animation genuinely is mind-blowing, and some of it was even done by the director himself. In fact, Shotago Shosono did a lot of animation this season, which is absolutely insane. He did storyboarding for all of these episodes, and also the second ending, and also did key animations for all of these episodes. That's what I'm talking about! This guy is an absolute beast at only 31 years old. Even younger than the guy who directed Chainsaw Man, which was only 12 episodes. It showed that Shota actually did some work on himself. He was the director of episode 8, which was the part where we get to see Himeno's apartment, which is absolutely beautiful and also very ambitious in many of its shots. It also contains a decent amount of action scenes at the end that look really good. He also directed one of the best looking episodes of season 1 of Jujutsu Kaisen episode 18. The suit is just insane and I I really hope he gets to be in charge of season 3 of Jujutsu Kaisen or just gets to be the main director of other shows in general. I also just love the use of colors in this season. That might be one of the visual's strongest aspects. Miwa's train scene looks beautiful with the background being blue and having a bunch of flying light spheres. There's such a good contrast between bright and dark colors. I love the part where a train drives past and all the colors return to normal until the train is gone again. Showing that this is just in her mind, potentially showing that this is how she feels when talking to Mechamaru. The aquarium scene is also pretty similar and really good looking. Generally, blue just looks really good in this season and is a color that's used quite a lot. They also know when to just tone the colors down when they need to, like the Maharaga fight or the scene with Ghetto that I mentioned in the beginning. I love how good sunsets look in this season, especially in the Gojo vs Toji fight, which also contains a pretty sick moment after Gojo hits Ghetto with the hollow purple. The camera pans through a bunch of buildings where the wall all have a hole in them, then panning to Toji's stomach where we see the same hole except it showcases the size of the hole even better by showing how much of Toji's body it takes up. So much that if it had been aimed at the center of his stomach, he would have been split in half. There was no need to show a wide shot of the building as the beam hit as this is way more creative and gives a lot more anticipation. This season looks so good and is directed so well that when you look back at season 1, you realize that it didn't even look that good. The colors are really ugly for the most part, with some exceptions, especially during the exchange event where they just slap the piss yellow filter on, making every single scene look like this. And just in general, in the rest of the season, the colors are pretty ugly, with a lot of bad lighting and CG effects added in compositing. It makes me appreciate the visuals of season 2 even more. Can you believe people say this season looks bad? Like a weirdly large amount of people say this and say that season 1 looks better, and I just can't understand. 
understand it. One of the main things they say they prefer for season one is the art style and how they don't like the more simplified art style of a season two. Something I haven't really talked about at all this video because I've already talked about that in this video. So make sure to check that out to hear my opinions on the art style change.